Okay, in this example, we're going to evaluate the inverse sine of negative one-half. To do this, uh, what I do is whatever this is equal to, let's call it y. Let's let y equal the inverse sine of negative one-half. The reason we do that is because it kind of takes us back to the definition of y equals inverse sine x. We take the sine of both sides and we get the sine of y equals, well, the sine of inverse sine negative one-half is negative one-half. But we need to remember that for inverse sine, y has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Well, if y is between 0 and pi over 2, we're going to get a positive answer, because all the trig functions are positive in quadrant 1. Because sine is negative, it's, it's got to be in the fourth quadrant, between negative 90 and 0. So therefore, we draw a triangle in the fourth quadrant. Evaluate this. The sine of y is sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And we get the 1, 2, square root of 3 triangle. And we know this angle has to be 30 degrees, because that's the angle opposite 1. All right, so the actual angle, no, so the, the angle here is 330, but we want our angle to be between negative 90 and 90. Therefore, the sine of negative 30, the sine of negative 30 is negative a half. Y is equal to negative 30, so that's what this is. We found the sine of negative 30 is, is negative a half. Y is negative 30, therefore this is equal to negative 30 degrees. Or if we write this in radians, we get negative pi over 6. So that's the, that, that's the answer to that uh, inverse trig expression.